Okay. Just left of it. That's a good little group there. G'day, welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I want to do a video on this rifle. Um, well, it's actually more about the barrel that John and Jacob over at TACOM HQ sent us over here to have a little play with, do some shooting, show it off, um, use it and get our thoughts, that sort of stuff. But really, that's the main thing of this video and what this rifle was sort of built to do in some fashions. But like I said, I'll give a quick recap over the whole thing before I get to that bit there. Okay, so... Start off with, it's a Barnard action, um, which is actually right hand bolt, left hand gate or left hand feed, um, which is actually in the uh, Lapua action. So I've, I've run in this same rifle, which I built for it, was built out of parts from um, GCPD, their, their parts bin, bits and pieces that they off the shelf and that weren't going to be used and that sort of stuff. And I built this rifle, put it together, made the front tube, got one of my bipod systems on it, did some work down the back here, changed things around. A lot of Garrus parts over at GCPD, but actually put together in a custom form with the Barnard action, like I said, in a Lapua bolt, running a Barnard trigger, which I have a little bit of a story about that too as well. Um, and sitting on top uh, is that it's a, actually a 60 MOA rail, which is a Barnard rail. It's got an air attack adjustable base which I'm running on zero but gives me adjustment and then a seven by seven to 35 by 56 night force attacker scope this one's actually first focal plane so those are all the details of the basic rifle and it shot really really well um, I've used it hasn't I haven't run that many rounds through it we're pretty hard at work doing what we do here but we have done uh, basically three cartridges now in it um, I've got them here that's where it started as a 300 Norma. Um, that was what we were just shooting. We did a, I think it was a 29 inch barrel for the 300 Norma, which shot very well. It went through its course and last season we took it out to just under 4,000 yards or 3,850 yards um, on steel out there. Still testing and developing, but that's what we got done this season. At the end of this season, we did this, this one here, which is a big hitter. That's the 30, 378 Weatherby Magnum. I only did our first little shoot with it um, and got out to 3,000 yards with that one. Um, got on very easily, shot very well, really liked the rifle and that setup. Um, that was in a 29 inch barrel as well, um, 29 and a half I think. Um, so those were just normal straight bull barrels, so inch and a quarter, 31.6 millimeters, um, just straight barrels, big muzzle brakes on the front of them and in that format the rifle shot really well and probably between them done just under 100 rounds is the, all that I've done out of the rifle. But the concept, everything worked really well, worked really nicely. But the whole time I designed this, uh, with this front tube, everything was engineered to be able to fit the structured barrel in it. So it's a step up with a structured barrel. That's what it's shooting now. Once again, it'll pull a bolt face, but that is the, the 33XC cartridge. So it's a, basically a souped up 338 Lapua cartridge designed by David Tubb um, and at this moment performing very well um, in this structured barrel. So I think the last bits, we've that's, that's a nutshell of what the rifle is, the action is, worked really well. Um, I'll come back to the trigger um, in just a moment but let's move this across and go on to what we're actually talking about here, the, the, the structured barrel. Where can we go? There we go. We'll go to there. Wait a minute. A little nylon rubbing block. I'll leave it on the steel. There we go. Okay, um, as said, um, John, well actually John contacted me and said, listen, he'd really like to get us one and see what we can do with it. He'd like to, uh, basically, he, he gave us the barrel. We had still a lot of cost involved with getting it here and tax, even though we didn't pay for it. Yes, it's how our system works. Um, freight, machining, all that sort of stuff. So it's a fair bit of effort we, and, and funds that we had to put into it as well. But the barrel and the, and the, um, 
bits and pieces for the cartridge, John and Jacob over at Tacom HQ supplied that stuff to do this test. So thank you very much for that. Um, as for how the rest of it went, it, listen, we, once we got it across here, a fair bit of, of, a, of a time delay involved in that process with licenses to get out of the USA and into Australia and all the rest of the bits and pieces. Yes, it is complicated in our world. Um, but once we got it here, then it's been a very, fairly quick process. Um, over to my gunsmith, the guy who does the chambering for me. First time he's seen one of these and a reasonable amount of working it out and fit it into his lathe to be able to do this sort of stuff. But that worked really, really well. Up at the, up at the chambering end, that was really straightforward. Uh, had the tub ream, went through and did that. All worked, come up really nicely. The barrel cut very well, worked very nicely. Um, his other comment, my gunsmith, was that it was a very straight barrel and surprisingly straight, straighter than normal very good barrels. I don't know the process and I haven't spoken to John over there as to what the process of doing this is, but whatever it is, ended up being a very true and very stiff barrel. So great on that score. Up the front here with the muzzle brake on here, that's a little complicated. There's flutes and you're cutting threads on the top of that and then filling up those threads so that the muzzle brake gases don't force back down the tubes and all that sort of stuff. A little complicated, but worked, worked nicely. Um, <laughs> it's ended up where I'm very happy with that. It's locked up nicely. We've got a decent size in that. Um, and my muzzle brake on the front here uh, works well. Um, I might even go out to a five port. This is a fairly big hitter, but listen, it's working well for the moment and there's a little bit to go into that side of things. Now, for those that don't know what a structured barrel is, um, I've got video of there and I'll put some images on to show the overall look of the barrel. But in, in a nutshell, it's a barrel that has extra structuring on the outside of it. Um, there is, so it en ends up with basically a truss section around the outside of a barrel. Tubes down the inside of it, so there's, there's holes I should say, so it ends up like, a, like a, a, a spoked wheel in the way of how structured it is, which then works like a, like a, like a bridge, like a suspension, like a, like a truss, where it's very stiff for the amount of weight it is. And that is a noticeable thing for how big the barrel is, it isn't that heavy. Um, and I think this combination, I, it, this, this actually weighs, the whole rifle together is weighing um, just over 20 pounds. So I would normally, in this sort of size caliber for a precision rifle, I'm normally targeting a bit more weight than that. You know, where it's 25 or 26, 24 to 28 pounds is normally sort of what I'm targeting. So it's a little bit light for its caliber um, in what I would normally do, but not to any detriment to it. So people looking at the lightness side of things, yes, there is some lightness for the amount of strength in this barrel. Um, so that's one bit of the structured barrel side of it. The big bit the, and the peculiar looking bit with the holes and with these funny lines and, and you could, they're covered up in this rifle, but the dots down the end here, that's actually designed to try and break up harmonics. So what the, what the simple thing is, in, in, and I've been through this before, but I'll nutshell it pretty quickly now, is one of the things that precision rifles work with or precision barrels work with is harmonics. Now, it is not the image that you can see as a rifle moves and you see it buck or you see it wriggle or you see it jump or you see that sort of stuff. That isn't what we're talking about in the way of harmonics. Harmonics are far smaller than that and they are simply a creation of or created by the explosion, that, that extremely fast explosion that happens as the chamber, as the, as the cartridge fires, creates a shock. That shock goes out, up the, up the barrel, and back down the barrel, and up the barrel and back down the barrel. It's bouncing at super high speed, far, far faster than what a bullet can explode, far, far faster than what gas can explode, far, far faster, which means it travels up and down. That traveling up and down and round and round and all that sort of place turns into multiple vibrations, which then combine and that creates harmonics. So that can create movements, very, very small, but movements, whips and all sorts of things that are happening at the, um, micro millimeter um, sizes in your barrel. So in extreme cases, you will actually be able to see it, but in most cases, it's actually happening um, at finer levels to that. What that ends up with is that the tip of the barrel, when your bullet is being released, is that the barrel is, is in a tiny different place. So in, in previous experience, in, in, when people have tested, they'll find 
by changing the different device on the front, like a muzzle brake on the front of your thing, changing it to a different weight one or a different style one, you can find a point of impact change. The logic of that is that that vibration is moving to a different place when the bullet is released. Um, and that's where the bullet goes. There is barrel, there is load tuning with the various ways of tuning your load to your harmonics to try and get it to where the barrel is moving the least. It's in theory going vibrating at the end and you're trying to get in a node where that barrel is in the most stable place it can. The same thing for barrel tuners. It's doing exactly the same thing. It's trying to tune that vibration to exactly a place or to a place where it is the most stable. So where it is basically the, the least movement or the most consistent movement happening. So that's the logic of what harmonics are doing. This and all these funny lines and the dots and even the tube and the structuring and the, the holes through things, all that sort of stuff is designed to try and break up those harmonics. So they don't have as much control over the tip of the barrel. And I suppose I'll quickly go into and say in that point there, I, as I expressed to John, I'm not certain I can prove anything there with the way I shoot. I'm planning to use it the way I use it. It has already performed very well, more so than you realize actually, but it's already performed very well. But as for where the way I generally set up a rifle and do things and shoot, I'm trying to absorb those harmonics myself through the body. I'm trying to take those harmonics away in a different fashion. So whether I'm going to see a difference because of what I'm already doing, um, I don't know. And at this stage, I couldn't say either way. At this stage, I won't tell you any lies. I can't say there's any difference. Um, they're a very good barrel, and I'm not saying there isn't. I believe for people who do the freeform shooting, who do just the bag shooting and don't and let the rifles move, let it skid on F-class bipods or on uh, on um, you know sorry the the good front rest and that sort of stuff where they let the rifle sh slide, then I believe they are the people that find a lot of benefit out of barrel tuners. They are the people that find a lot of benefit out of load tuning. So in that place, I think there might be more results, but. No, this doesn't matter. I, as I said, I'm going to use it the way I use it, and it's performed very well at this moment. So that's the stuff on the outside here. Um, the stiffness, great. The, the, the straightness, great. The weight shot, great. And I'll get into more on that in a minute. The other bit that's designed here is for people who have who've followed this through. Well, I suppose there's a couple of things I wanted to say before I move on. One is people saying it felt completely different when I shot it. Well, no, it didn't. Not for me. Not at all. Now, once again, if you were in that where the free form shooting, free recoil shooting, that sort of stuff, there may be a real difference in the feeling. There may be a hum or a vibration or something you can feel normally that's gone with this. I don't know. For me, shot like a rifle, shot like all my rifles. Didn't feel any different whatsoever, apart from the fact it was probably, it's a little bit lighter. So for the amount of thump, I felt it a little bit more, pushed me a little bit harder. Nothing to do with the structure and the and the all that sort of stuff totally to do with the weight if it was four pounds heavier six pounds heavier i would have felt a little less or maybe like i said maybe go to a five port muzzle brake but that's what i felt okay so no i didn't feel any difference once again shot great um the last bit in the way of talking about <coughs> pardon me the concept of this one of, and I haven't actually spoken to this about John, but I, I presume really it's a bit of a side effect of what they did, which they then worked on and made part of the, the thing, is because of this structure with the holes through there, means there's holes in there. And what John's done, you can't see on this rifle, once again I'll show you an image, but there's those holes all exit with a hole randomly spaced in an uneven fashion around so that those tubes have a hole at the end of them. That actually, because of the what's going on at the end here, causes pretty high airflow. Um, to be true, if I didn't realize, I didn't stop and think about it, I suppose, too much, but that airflow is very high and it was noticeable. And the reason for the airflow is that when it goes bang, the muzzle brake forces air out here flat out, probably in the 4,000 kilometers an hour is the gas speed that's shooting out here. So that gas is shooting off there super, super, super fast. Um, what that causes, because that gas going out, is it causes a massive low pressure right here, right there, all, all, all around, not, not in the front here, not on the sides, but from the top and the bottom from the back here, there's going to be a massive low pressure, 
which means it sucks air in and these tubes are open. When I first shot this rifle, when I first, and I went out and I shot four, I actually shot five rounds with different powder loads in them to check my pressures. Uh, I also run, I also um, lap the, it's, it's running in the rifle, so I do the pull throughs and make sure all the rifling works properly. I did all that sort of process off camera, no scope, shooting in the paddock, um, just to check my load pressures. So that's what I actually did to start off with. Rifle was very good in that sort, needed almost nothing in the way of running in. It was, it, it lapped in really easily, leaving very little in the barrel, so very happy with it. Um, but when I first shot it, there was clunks of sand on the back of the muzzle brake. And for an instant I thought, oh, wait a minute, is that the way I sealed it up with the problem? The instant after that I realized that the way this was finished is once all the machining's done and all finished off, they sandblast the thing on the outside to make it all an even color, even coat. Um, and then they, that sandblasting was inside the tubes, not inside the barrel, it was thoroughly cleaned, but inside the tubes, which you can't really access properly, had sand in them. And that actually pulled the gas out flat out. Sorry, pulled the, as the gas went through being pulled by this low vacuum area here, low pressure area here, it actually pulled the sand out with it. And it was still doing that a few shots later. The other bit that I noticed, which is fairly curious, which tells me the airflow is going in both directions, actually, although it's pulling through there, is that because I have my thin wall aluminium tube here, which covers it up and makes it look more like a, more like a rifle rather than just a structured barrel, um, so it hides some of the, the, the decorative, or it's not decorative at all, some of the, 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 the weird look, the, the functionality look, the, 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 the dots down here and more of the tubes and the holes and bits and pieces. But what it also means is that I generally have a place where I pick my rifle up through here where I grab around this tube, not touching the barrel, just that's on this tube here. With the other ones, when I've shot a similar amount of rounds, I haven't really felt much in the way of warmth here. You'll feel your barrel, but it's not, you don't feel much through this tube. But it will do after a certain amount of time, but I actually felt reasonably warm through here. My conclusion or my deduction is that those holes that are hidden underneath here were actually letting the heat out onto this tube, more so than just a barrel warming up through that area. Um, in saying that, I haven't shot the whole thing enough or a lot to, and in the comparisons with the other cartridges I did, a um, lot of powder that we're running in here and over over 120 grains of the 2218 um, is what we're running in that cartridge. Um, but yeah, there was some warmth there that I'm not used to. So anyway, that's what I can tell you on that sort of score with the barrel. That's how it works. Um, and from what I've seen so far, I've been very happy. Okay, well listen, that's a nutshell of the barrel. Been very happy with it. Um, and as said, it actually shot a little better than you realize. There was a couple of things going on. Now, one of them in cartridge or in this in this three three XC um, in perspective. I told you which those rounds are. A little more perspective is um, well. Let's get rid of those two thirty calibers. That is a three three eight Lapua. And I suppose what people directly compare this thing with sort of that's a 375 shy tack And for people that know this channel, that's my 375 Gibbs. The, listen, in comparison, I don't know, I haven't, I don't I do much with the 375 shy tack Probably shoots pretty similar. My Gibbs has a fair bit more um, boom to it and it's a few steps up. Um, and the 3 3 Lapua down the bottom here is quite a bit under. At the moment, under by um, around 200 feet per second is where it's at at the moment. Um, but I don't know where I'm going to finish. I think there might be almost another 100 feet per second in this. Um, so that, that will come back to what that is, the 3 3 XC. So, like I said, over 120 grains of powder, um, and I think I can go further. Uh, what we actually had to do, the way these cases come, these are Peterson brass, it looks, it's t made for tub. Um, there's a little, little rolled bit at the top, there's some little squash marks and bits and pieces in this brass, which when we went to chamber, we realized that, okay, this brass is gonna grow a tiny bit um, once it all flattens out. 
So we deliberately set it up with a tiny bit more headspace, or my gunsmith deliberately set it up with a tiny bit more headspace um, so that it could grow forward and flatten all that stuff out um, when we're actually in the fire forming, in the first time we fire the brass. So that's one of the things that was going on here. Um, my extreme spread wasn't huge it, in the way of speed. We're at around just on the just over 20 feet per second, so nothing terrible, um, but still definitely there. Um, and like I said, for for an obvious reason, we're fire forming the brass. So I expect better things. And because we're fire forming the brass, I didn't finish my full prep. I didn't trim exactly the same. I didn't do the stuff at the end here because I want that grass brass all to grow to its size and then we'll set it and then I'll finish it off. So it needs to be fired once to make it perfect for the way I want to do it. But still, can't complain. We were under an MOA everywhere um, and shooting really well when it got out there and settled down, but I think it'll go better still in truth. Uh, uh, 300 grain, they're the 300 grain burgers. We'll do the 300 grain A tips as well, but the 300 grain burgers where I start, I've done a lot with them, I really like them. Um, and the, I think we'll probably be up around the 3,100 feet per second. But even at the 3,050 roughly feet per second, it's not terrible. So there's the other feature that I want to talk about is the trigger in this thing. Um, really nice trigger, um, but always been a little bit light for me. So it's always been not too much over half a pound is what this trigger was at. Every time I forget about the damn thing, it shoots fine, I adjust, but when I first go to shoot, it's a little hard to get on the trigger and feel it rather than just shoot it when you try and find the trigger. Uh, but it always, I've always got there with the two other cartridges I was shooting, I always got to that point. This time when I pulled it out and put it back together, which it needs to get stripped right down then put back together then the whole rifle, um, it come up even lighter. It come up to the point where it was down a quarter of a pound, or almost at a quarter of a pound. So it got to the point where I couldn't feel the trigger. I couldn't get to feel it. If I tried to feel it, I shot it. So being very, very time poor and under pressure, it was still safe, but I had to have my thinking head on. But you'll see my finger isn't doing exactly what it should do. I really had to hold my finger off the trigger and then go to find it and it would shoot. So it was a real surprise. By the time I felt it, it had gone bang. So not, that's not the most relaxing way to shoot. So the group would be almost certainly better if I had done what I now have done and lifted it up to just under a pound where I like it to be. I really like to be able to get to my trigger to, to actually get to where I can actually start to squeeze and I can pull through. So it's a very almost, you can't see my finger move, but that's what my brain's doing. And really, I don't have to think about my finger. I don't think about that. I think about the shot placement. I think about the rifle. I think about everything that's going on on that side of things, but I really don't have to think about my trigger other than the fact I'm ready to fire. Um, whereas yesterday when I was shooting this thing, yeah, I was having to think about the trigger because I was having to keep my finger off. A very unnatural stance, but to its credit, <laughs> the, the way everything shot, the rifle and the barrel, performed very well. So I would think better again now that I've adjusted it. And with Fireform Brass, we're going to take it to the next level. Okay, I think, I suppose, with the with the what I am using, it, like I said, it's the it's the um, two two one eight powder. I've fire formed. I went through and did some more afterwards, so we can see I still got. Um, I, I did up forty five rounds actually because I've got some spares, um, and I've actually gone through and twenty five of them have been fire formed now. So that's good for our next time round. We'll start with those next time. As said, the uh, the three hundred gram burger. These are the ones I was using. They're the. Um, hybrid OTM tactical. Um, they've shot very well in my in my three three throughout the pool magnum, but I expect another level and this sort of stuff. The last bit I'd say it is a one and nine twist and it's 30 and a half inches long. So should perform really well, maybe, and I'd so the last bit I was going to finish off in the way of shooting the rifle, it's probably pushing a little bit harder than I prefer in the way of the weight of it. The, and that is weight versus the um, versus the bang. Um, and yes, a structured barrel. I heard comments at the beginning of things. Does a structured barrel? You should shoot it without the muzzle brake to start off with. I think there's some people that think there's some sort of magic going on with a structured barrel. That there no harmonics means no recoil. No, not at all. 
there's no change it's not a different universe we step into when you take on something exotic like this it's still all the normal newton's law equal and opposite still apply if you've got a mount of bang going that way then there's a mount of bang going that way turns into a big heavy thing it doesn't move anywhere as much as a bullet but that's what's going on so you still get the same thump in the back here the rifle setup is still just as important if you have your rifle where it's bucking and moving and wriggling around the place the structured barrel isn't going to stop that it doesn't have its own gravity zone it's not going to change that side of things what it does do differently and the things that are without question there is it is very stiff versus its weight um, as for the harmonic breaking up and that side of things there is sound logic this is real engineering that's sitting in here as to whether it's going to affect your shooting or not I would probably put it down to a to a degree if you find differences out of a barrel tuner if you find differences out of group shooting where, where, you, where you adjust your powder or adjust your seating depth and you find differences then I would say that yes this is going to make differences to how you shoot or what your groups are like um, and that that's as far as I'll go at the moment I still have questions as to whether it's going to I'm, I'm going to be able to prove it and, and be as positive as, as, as I would like to be for someone that puts in so much effort but what I'm going to bring to you is what I really see um, and what what it really does and at the moment it shot really well and the from the fire form in the cases and a nervous trigger a trigger finger um, like I said better than you actually thought um, but wrapped with it shot really well looking forward to doing some more looking forward to going out with the fire form brass um, now with a set trigger uh, with an, a correctly set trigger I should say um, and the rest of the rifle yeah performing really well really happy with it it is a little bit sort of my design um, so I'm very happy with it and it's now working exactly as it's supposed to set up in with this um, with this big barrel in it the other barrels are going to swing back into it as well next season all three barrels will be back in here and I'm very confident of the setup with this thing it pulls apart really easily puts back together really easily as long as you remember to check your trigger pressure then I'm all good and as I said I may even go to a five port on the front here this was fine um, I suppose when I was talking about the amount of shove uh, that, it, that it's pushing on me that may well have been the fact that I wasn't able to set up as I normally would because of my trigger um, when I get on to this sort of thing there's occasions where I will use a little bit of um, pull on on the grip just very gentle not trying to change that a little bit to try and deal with or to settle it down um, and I always find part of my shooting process is making me comfortable with a rifle I go for make anyone comfortable with a rifle making me comfortable and I didn't quite get to that place because I was hedging around a trigger um, so maybe I don't need to do anything or maybe I do maybe I should step up muzzle brake to go with the amount of powder and the weight of the rifle we'll see um, but as said um, yeah perform really well and, and better than than you thought it did um, so I was very happy we were very happy um, thank you very much John and Jacob over there for sending this one to play with we look forward to doing some more um, as for how much we'll do now don't, we're probably going to be waiting until we get some it's about to go well it's very wet at the moment it's about to go green um, harder for us to get on paddocks and shoot things and really this next job in a real sense is out at 3,000 yards in the beginning of where we start things and then this one really at the two miles sort of stuff is where it's going to be where we're going to be proving it using it showing it off that sort of stuff so um, yeah we're almost there a couple of tweaks and we'll be there Anyway, guys, let us know any thoughts on that sort of stuff. Um, hope you liked the video, and um, we'll um, catch you next time.